to Russia now, where the U.S. ambassador there has finally been allowed to see Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovitz for the first time since his arrest more than two weeks ago. Ambassador Lynn Tracy tweeted, quote, he is in good health and remains strong. Gershkovitz was arrested on espionage charges and will appeal that charge tomorrow in a Moscow court. The U.S. has determined that he is wrongfully detained. Ambassador Tracy is calling for his immediate release. We turn next to another American being held prisoner in Russia, Paul Whelan, who's been in a Russian jail cell since 2018 and was convicted of espionage in 2020. He's currently serving a 16-year sentence. At the time of Whelan's arrest, the U.S. government also declared him wrongfully detained. But today, the family of Whelan spoke out in a statement saying that Paul has told them he feels abandoned and that his resilience is shaken. The Biden administration responded earlier today, saying, since the earliest days of this administration, we have sought to bring Paul Whelan home. We will continue to pursue every avenue to secure his release. David Whelan, Paul's brother, joins us now. David, thank you so much for your time. Always appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, first, just want to ask you, when we talk about his resilience being shaken, what do, what do you mean by that? Tell us what kind of uh, emotional state that Paul is in. I think from the very start of his detention back in 2018, he has tried to maintain hope. And uh, he has certain things that he does every day to create a routine and to you know, keep a mental positivity. And I think that the latest detention of an American by the Kremlin has shaken that uh, so that he's uh, not only less hopeful, but I think really concerned that, uh, that he may be going back through a process that has happened a number of times now, where uh, an American is con uh, brought home because of concessions the U.S. government makes, but Paul doesn't come home. Are you and your family planning on interacting differently at this point with the State Department? I think we are. Uh, Elizabeth's going to take a bit of a pause on her meetings with them. I think she's finding that there, there aren't fruitful outcomes to the discussions that they've been having. We're, we don't get the sense that there are creative strategies being brought to bear on Paul's case. And frankly, uh, the family of a, a wrongful detainee has limited resources. You know, we take days off from work. We pay to travel to Washington, D.C. to do advocacy, um, it, it, there's a cost. And I think we've decided that for now the cost, uh, we need to hold off until uh, until we can see better progress. Why do you think that Paul doesn't get the attention like Brittany Griner, Trevor Reed, and now Evan Gershkovich? It's hard to know. Uh, the special presidential envoy for hostage affairs last week said that he didn't know why Paul's case was harder, why the Russian government wasn't letting him go. And I think if even the people in the State Department know it's hard for us to understand either. Uh, it, it's it's really too bad. I think that there was an opportunity to bring him home in 2020, and the U.S. government decided not to do that. Uh, and then since then, it's just become very difficult, and I think it's not going to get easier with a second American charged with espionage by the Kremlin. Have you and your family discussed what your next steps might be? I know that you said that your sister is now saying that she's going to maybe slow down that communication with the State Department. But now going forward, is there another strategy? There isn't for our family. I mean, a lot of it's hoping and waiting and trying to keep Paul's spirits up so that he can survive as long as he can. I mean, unfortunately, he may have to survive for 16 years, the entirety of the sentence, and we hope that that's not the case. Uh, and we want to keep our parents' spirits up as well, because, of course, they get disappointed when they hear Paul becoming uh, despondent on the phone. So, I mean, I think we, we will just continue to try and focus on what we have to do, which is to, to support Paul and to support our parents. But uh, it, it would be ideal if the State Department would also engage and, and put the pressure on that they have said that they would do and, and try and bring Paul home. You mentioned the potential for him potentially having to serve out that 16 years. Is there a part of you that's given up hope? No, I mean, I think you always have to keep some hope. It, it would be impossible to continue either for, as a family member or as Paul if you gave up hope. Uh, I think that's why we see some wrongful detainees attempt suicide when they are uh, in, uh, in detention or being held hostage. And fortunately, Paul hasn't gotten to that point. So we will try and keep him as mentally healthy and physically healthy as we can until, uh, until he's able to come back. Well, we uh, thank you again so much for your time and always talking with us, David. And, and hopefully this helps just to keep the conversation going about your brother. I appreciate you having me on. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.